dear learners of NIOS. Today we are studying biology, shoot system 2. So uh, before I start today's uh, discussion, I would like to uh, recapitulate the previous uh, part of it, uh, that is shoot system 1. In that we had studied that the aerial part of the plant is the shoot uh, system and it is erect generally uh, goes away from the uh, uh, geotropic uh, pull and uh, it is uh, uh, towards the sun. The sun, the shoot system grows towards the sun. So these were the qualities and the kind of uh, organs uh, that a shoot system wears are uh, leaves, buds, fruits uh, and uh, lateral branches and uh, how uh, we had also discussed how shoot system is different from the roots, not only for uh, the external characters, but also for its anatomy, that is internal structure, right? So we shall be moving on to uh, the internal structure of the stem. Uh, now, uh, since we understand that the stem and the roots, they too are quite different from each other and their structure and functions correlate. So whatever structure the stem bears has its own purpose and function. So there is always this kind of relationship in most of the uh, living organisms. So plants are uh, also living and they have this structure and re uh, function relationship. So the internal structure of the stem can be studied if we cut the stem transversely and observe it under a compound microscope. So this is the compound microscope and I'm going to cut one section of the stem and uh, in the laboratory you can always uh, use uh, very fine or new blades to cut the stem and uh, prepare a slide with the help of your teachers. So uh, for example, I have uh, this stem with me and we try to cut the section. See this woody character is because of the secondary growth in the plant. Secondary growth we will discuss later and now you see the precision, the fineness of the knife which helps me to cut a very thin slice of the stem and we try to observe it under the microscope and the structure generally uh, temporarily it can be observed like this but uh, uh, generally what we do is we color it, color it with various uh, reagents and uh, all the tissues which are either hard or soft, they can take up their separate colors. That is how the, uh, all the cells, they take up different colors of stains and under the microscope, we try to observe. So in this, when we observe, what we are seeing, we have to focus it as per the uh, number of my own uh, eyes. Uh, focal length and that is how you also adjust it and set it to the structure we are trying to see and under the microscope what we get to see I'll try to talk about it first I'll show you one picture this is the picture and uh, what structures I see under the microscope they shall be visible on your screen now and I'll try, I'll try to tell you, this is a diagrammatic diagram and not exact picture of the microscope, uh, you know, of the slide. But uh, with this help, we'll try to understand the structure of stem of a dicot plant. So what we see in the uh, diagram of the slide, first layer, which is no, uh, labeled as number one, is epidermis. It is the outermost layer. Then number two is the hypodermis. Hypodermis is the few cells which are thin, 
thin layer and uh, they are below the epidermis. So epidermis is the outermost covering and uh, scales you are seeing they are multicellular uh, hair like projections which are called scales. Uh, you remember in case of roots we have unicellular hairs but in case of uh, stem we have multicellular. You can see the division of cells and so many cells make one scale. Then number three is the general cortex or the soft, soft tissue or the parenchyma. Then number four is endodermis. Number endodermis marks the uh, special layer which demarcates the outer portion from the inner vascular structures. Endodermis generally has thick wall and uh, there are few cells which have thin wall. They allow the passage of fluid from them. So number five is sclerenchyma, the hard bust, number five. Look at it specially because the cells appear darker here in the diagram. And actually the reason is the wall is very thick. So they provide a, a stronger structure and cover for the delicate tissue beneath. And the delicate tissue beneath number six is phloem, phloem and number seven is the cambium which has the uh, meristematic uh, activity of uh, forming new cells in uh, the secondary growth of the plant and number eight is uh, number eight and nine both are actually xylem and number eight is metaxylem the older xylem vessels and tracheids actually and uh, number uh, nine is the protozoil, protozylum, that means the fresher xylem vessels, all right, uh, tracheids. So number 10 is the wood parenchyma, which is at the center, and they, that makes the pith of the uh, stem. So the girth of the uh, whole stem is given by the pith. It is the soft uh, tissue which is central in position in the stem. So I would like to show you one specimen here. Uh, if you focus on this and you, if you try to see the natural presence of this is the cortex on the periphery, the dark green which you get to see on the periphery is the epidermis and this is the central pith, all right? And here is the xylem and phloem. So when, when I cut the section, uh, I cut it transversely. If I cut a long section like this, then I call it vertical section. All right. Can you see the vertical section, how I cut it? It is like this. Okay. So if I cut it like this, then it becomes the transverse section. So right now the diagram that you are seeing is the transverse section of the stem. Okay, so this is how we understand the internal structure of the stem. Most of the dicot plants they have this kind of structure. Now we talk about uh, medullary rays which is the narrow margin of parenchymatous cells between the vascular bundles. If I go back to the same slide do you see that there are two bundles and in between there is a layer of normal cells and that normal uh, parenchymatous cells, they are separating the two bundles. So this particular parenchymatous uh, layer of cells between the vascular bundles is called medullary ray, all right? So medullary rays are the narrow regions of parenchymatous cells in between the vascular bundles. Next, last is the pith. I showed you pith in the, uh, in the sample. So the central uh, parenchymatous zone with the intercellular spaces, they are uh, loosely packed cells. They are not hard, hardly packed, hard packed cells, right? So now let's uh, move to the monocot stems. You understand the difference between dicot stem and a monocot stem. So earlier we discussed about the dicot stems. Now we are going to talk about monocot stems. Monocots are represented by family gramini generally, grass family. 
and the representative uh, samples that you understand the examples are wheat, maize, uh, uh, garden grass, etc. So their stem structure is quite different from the dicot stems. Generally, we see that monocots are short-lived plants. They grow for a season, give off their seeds or their product and they die off. But uh, dicots are the plants who live longer and they have to undergo secondary growth in the stem so that stem grows in girth. Over a period of time, you must have observed that a small plant which you ever planted in the garden has become thicker, thicker, thicker and thicker. So this is how secondary growth is necessary for the dicot plants because they have, ling they have to live longer and for many years together and they have to be stronger to understand the, uh, to withstand the atmospheric, uh, you know, uh, or geographical changes. So uh, this is how main difference in the life of monocots and dicots is. Hence, it influences the stem structure as well. A transverse section of monocot stem reveals the following structures. So uh, the outermost is again same, epidermis, and in the center is a ground tissue. It is a mass of parenchymatous tissue and only a few uh, peripheral layers below the epidermis are sclerenchymatous. Now, we must understand the difference between parenchymatous tissue and the sclerenchymatous tissue. Parenchyma is thin-walled and loosely packed tissue. So, it does not provide strength. But sclerenchyma has thick-walled tissues and it provides strength to the stem and uh, this is called hypodermis, all right. So vascular bundles, uh, bundles in uh, monocots are numerous, scattered in the ground. In case of dicots, if you remember, they were arranged in a circle, right? But in case of monocots, they are scattered uh, under the, um, in the ground tissue. So each bundle has its own uh, qualities. They are collateral uh, and closed. There is no cambium strip between xylem and phloem. Um, you remember cambium is the special tissue which has ability to divide the cells. So uh, now since monocots don't need uh, secondary growth, so they don't have much of cambium between xylem and phloem. So all right, so and dark xylem uh, and xylem occurs in the form of letter Y and the inner uh, most protoxylem is uh, disintegrate to form a water cavity so that the conduction of water in the stem becomes a easier thing for the plant. So uh, we'll see this diagram now and you can make out in the very first diagram which is labeled as A. It has uh, so many vascular bundles spread in the uh, ground tissue. And if you look at the figure B, you can uh, further see a bigger version of it, uh, magnified uh, stem TS of the monocot. And in this, you are able to see a little bit of uh, nature of the cell wall and the kind of tissue involved. And in diagram C, if you see, there are metaxylem, there is protoxylem and Y-shaped arrangement of the xylem. Then uh, there are companion cells and seed tubes, which represent phloem. Seed tubes are a component of phloem tissue. And the bundle sheet, which is, which is called sclerenchymatous in nature, now you understand sclerenchymatous, I already told you. So uh, secondary growth, why, uh, now let's move on to why secondary growth in the stem is required. I already told you that uh, plants with age, they need to add strength to the stem so that the stem can bear or the tree or the plant can bear the pressures of air and other atmospheric uh, like uh, rains and typhoons and 
hence they have to be stronger and keep the plant upright for many years, hence the uh, secondary growth is required. This is why you can see that very tall trees can withstand strong winds and lashing rains without falling down. But monocot plants like wheat, rice, maize and grasses, they get easily washed off because of the there is no secondary growth in their stems. So you get to hear that uh, if there is heavy rain in the uh, wheat crop, then uh, there is a lot of loss happening and farmers are really uh, suffering that loss because monocots have weak stems and they uh, uh, you know, fall down because of the rains, hence uh, uh, this loss. Let's move on. Uh, the activity of the vascular cambium from the secondary vascular tissue is as follows. The strip of the cambium is uh, in the vascular bundle, it is called fascicular cambium. They are the cells having uh, uh, power to divide. Then now see this diagram. You can easily uh, understand from this. Uh, figure A, you can see uh, a dicot stem and vascular bundles arranged in the form of a ring in figure A. In figure B, second stage has come where the cambium cells, they join from the medullary rays in between, they grow out and they meet the uh, next, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, layer. And uh, in the third figure C, if you see, uh, there are a lot of medullary rays and secondary xylem, which is cut out with the help of uh, fascicular cambium. A new xylem is cut out and new phloem is cut out and this is how uh, stem uh, gets a uh, good range of strong tissue and outside near the cork or the bark as you see in, in this case, I would like to show you this plant. The outer surface which you are seeing, this is the phloem and cork, it is generally, uh, it has Outer layer also has uh, meristematic activity and, and it uh, adds on cork tissue. Uh, now, when you visit a kikar plant or uh, bhojpatra, then you see that the bark outside tissue uh, can peel off like layers of paper and uh, that is uh, used as, uh, in olden times, it was used as uh, paper to write down on. So this is how uh, internal growth and the uh, external growth, secondary growth adds strength to the stem. Let's move on to uh, uh, lenticels are the breathing holes in the uh, outer cork layer and phallogen, phalloderm and phallum together constitute the periderm or the cork tissue which we discussed outside due to internal increase in the thickness, the periderm replaces epidermis and becomes protective in function and it is very strong, it is really protecting uh, the stem. All the dead cells lying outside the active phallogen, they constitute the bark. So uh, do you know dalcini which is a very uh, a famous condiment, it is a bark. And so many other spices are actually obtained from the barks of certain trees. Barks of certain trees are used as medicine as well. So, well, uh, let's move to the TS of an old uh, stem and a portion has been enlarged. And just have a look and then we'll move forward. So, I basically I want you to focus on bark. Uh, can you see? Uh, number one point which is called lenticel. Lenticel is the breathing uh, area of the bark. Here the cells are thin walled and gaseous exchange can happen and below that is the epidermis and then the cork, cork cambium. So all these make up the core. All right. So inner structures we have already explained how uh, metaxylem and secondary xylem is cut and how the tree stem or the girth grows over the years. So let's move on 
to the leaf. Leaf is the flattened and expanded lateral appendage of the stem uh, or the branch which develops from its nodes. We had already discussed what are nodes and what are internodes. So leaf generally grows on a node. It originates from uh, leaf primordium formed by the shoot meristem. See, if you remember, shoot has its cells on the apex which has meristematic ability. Meristematic ability means they are capable of division and they bear a bud in its axil called axillary bud. From here, the leaf develops. All right. So, uh, if you remember, I have shown you this kind of sample where you had seen these are the buds, special buds and in this such big leaves in due course of time will be formed. All right. So, they can be present in the axil of any leaf or they can be present as a lateral appendage. Uh, so, what are leaves? Actually, leaves are the important physiological processes of photosynthesis is carried on in the leaves and the transpiration and respiration also is done in the leaves. So, besides protective uh, axillary buds, leaves can get modified into certain structures for the storage of food, water, climbing up for the weak stems, if you remember, and vegetative propagation. For example, I had discussed uh, adrak uh, or the ginger, if you remember. So, if you break one bud of uh, ginger, it can grow into another. So, uh, or even uh, your mint or which you popularly known as pudina. So, pudina also grows like that. So, this is how vegetative propagation means making of new plants from the old plants is also helped with the help of stem. So, right now we are discussing about leaf, the structure of leaf. Now, this is a leaf, right? Can you see the structure? This is the petiole. With this, it is attached to the stem, all right? So, this is the leaf lamina and this is the stalk. All right. So, uh, the leaf base, I will show you in another plant in which leaf base is very specific. All right. Can you see this? This is the leaf base. With the help of this leaf base, this is a rose leaf and this is the leaf base. This is how it is attached to the plant. Okay. So, now we will move on to the petiole. This is the petiole. It is the stalk of the leaf. Leaf can be petiolate or without uh, even this stalk. So, such leaves which do not have petio uh, petiole or the uh, stalk, they are called sessile. Have you seen some leaves directly coming out of stem like this? So, they are called sessile, all right. So, in monocots also sessile leaves can be there. The petiole may get uh, modified and they swell up. Uh, for example, in certain plants for floating, uh, they become like orange and filled up. Uh, so, these are the, now let us move on to the second feature of the leaves whereby you are seeing uh, not just green, but there can be many other colors of the leaves, but they all help in performing photosynthesis, which is the main function of the leaf. Now, let us focus on the leaf tips. If you uh, see leaf tips, so leaf tips can be different. And let us see some of the leaf tips. This leaf has one kind of tip. This has another kind of tip. This leaf has another shape, some different one. And this is serrated like this. So now you see that leaf 
can have different morphological appearances along with the various uh, modifications for functions uh, and uh, uh, leaf blade or the lamina is the green and thin flattened part of the leaf and on that veins and veinlets transverse through its surface. Can you see this leaf? This is the main vein. Can you see the main vein and the side branches? So, uh, this is uh, called veins and veinlets. They transfer through the whole surface and their main function is to keep the leaf in a spread form. Okay? So, this is how function of the leaf is performed and most prominent vein which run through the base till the apex is called the uh, midrib, okay? as I had shown you in this. So, this becomes the midrib. Okay? Right. So, let us move on to uh, uh, one summary and uh, uh, now, I hope uh, the internal structure of the leaf we shall uh, discuss in some other uh, lesson. And right now, let me quickly summarize to you that all the dicot and monocot stems uh, undergo certain kind of functions and monocots generally do not have secondary growth, whereas dicots which have to live for the years and have to grow stronger they have uh, secondary growth. Secondary growth in the stem has a particular uh, system to follow, certain steps to follow and this is how uh, wood is formed inside and the stems are very strong. They withstand uh, rains and uh, you know uh, thunderous uh, geographical calamities or whatever. So, this is how uh, the leaves which uh, carry the perform uh, main function is photosynthesis and uh, the main vein and the veinlets make the part of the leaf lamina. Leaf lamina performs the major function of photosynthesis. So, uh, now we have covered uh, two important functions carried out in the aerial part of the plant. So, thank you so much for your uh, attention learners. Uh, with this, we conclude this lesson.